everybody. Welcome to our 6.4 lesson on finding the distance between two points on the coordinate plane. Okay, go ahead and open up your binder to your MP notes section. Please label your notes with the title that you see at the top of this page and jot down the following steps. Please pause your video while you write these notes down and resume the video when you're done writing the steps. Let's start with a quick review of how to plot points on the coordinate plane. Okay, quick, some quick reminders are located right down here. We need to start every point at the origin. Now remember the origin is where the x and the y axes cross one another. So that's right in the middle of our coordinate plane. Every ordered pair has an x value and a y value. The x value tells how to move across starting at the origin just like the x-axis moves across. Our y-value in the ordered pair tells us how to move up or down, just like the y-axis goes up or down. So I'm going to start with our first ordered pair, negative 3, 5. I'm going to start at the origin, and I'm going to go across negative 3. Now that means I need to move left, because negative numbers are to the left of 0. So I'm going to move left, negative 3, and then the 5 tells me I'm going to move up for positive 5, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that point's going to go right here. Okay, our next ordered pair is 6, negative 2. I go back to the origin. I'm going to start over with a new ordered pair. I'm going to move across positive 6. That means I'm going to move to the right 6. And from there, I'm going to be moving down 2. And there I'll put my point. Our next point is 4, 1. I go back to the origin. I'm going to be moving across positive 4 and then up positive 1 and my point's going to go right here. Our last order here is negative 5, negative 7. I'm going to go back to the origin for my starting point. I'm going to move to the left 5 because negative numbers move left and then down and I'll put my point. Okay, and there's our point. All right, let's take a look at our first example. The problem says find the distance between the points 5, 8 and negative 4, negative 5. Remember, our first step will be to plot the points. Please do that now. Okay, once our points have been plotted, please check yours with mine to make sure that you have, in fact, plotted them correctly. Our next step will be to connect the points. Please make sure that you are using a straight edge to connect your points. And go ahead and do that now. Okay, once our points have been connected, our next step is to make a right triangle. Remember that this line that we've just drawn needs to be the hypotenuse of our right triangle. So we want to make sure that we are staying on the grid lines to create that right triangle. So I'm going to start here at this bottom point, and I'm going to go across, staying on the grid line, until I get to this point, at which I'm going to go straight up. Okay, now I have created a right triangle connecting my two points. Okay, our next step is going to be to count the length of both of the legs of our right triangle. Okay, so we're literally going to count how many squares we are going across from here to here, and that turns out to be nine units long. Okay, then we're going to count how many we are going from here to get up to here. Go ahead and count that out. It should be 13 units. Once we've got that done, we can go ahead and plug our information into our Pythagorean theorem and solve. Okay, so I'm going to fill in my information. I know that my legs are 9 units and 13 units, so that'll say 9 squared plus 13 squared is equal to c squared, remembering that c is always our hypotenuse, the one across from the right angle. All right, 9 squared is 81. 13 squared is 169, and that'll be equal to c squared. 
Once I add 81 plus 169, I get 250 equals c squared. Now remember that um, we need to find the square root of that. So I'm going to square root on both sides. Square root of c squared gives me c, and the square root of 250 turns out to be 15.81. I'm going to round that because it really turns out to be a big long decimal. We're going to round to the hundredths. And because we don't know if these little squares on our grid are centimeters, millimeters, inches, we're just going to call our label units. So let me rewrite that so it's a little more clear to read. My hypotenuse, the distance between my two points, is 15.81 units long. All right, let's go ahead and do our second example. This time we're going to find the distance between the points negative 2, 5 and 6, negative 1. Why don't you go ahead and plot your points on your coordinate plane. All right, go ahead and double check that your points are graphed correctly. Then grab your straight edge and connect your points. All right, once you've connected those points, let's form our right triangle. Remember, you must stay on the grid lines, and you, the line that we've already drawn connecting our two points is going to be the hypotenuse of our right triangle. All right, double check that your right triangle looks like mine, and then let's go ahead and count the side lengths of our two legs. Here's our right angle so that we know that our legs are going to be the red sides. And our vertical leg right here is six units long. And our horizontal leg down here is eight units long. Let's go ahead and put those into our Pythagorean theorem. Okay, once I put my two leg lengths into the Pythagorean theorem, uh, my formula should look like this. I know that 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64, and that'll be equal to c squared. Now 36 plus 64 is 100, and that turns out pretty nice since 100 is a perfect square, meaning when I take the square root of it, I'm going to get a whole number. And the square root of 100 is 10. That means my hypotenuse is going to be 10 units long. And we're done. Go ahead and do your checkpoints and check your notes and your checkpoint questions in with your teacher. Have a great day, everyone.